Hello friends, my name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson, and I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church. I'm so excited that you've joined us for worship this day. We're going to be finishing up our series entitled Opposite Day. This has been a glimpse into what our children are learning and how these lessons are just as much a continuing lesson for adults and and Christians who are more experienced and living out their discipleship a little bit further. There are always good lessons to learn. So let us join together now and praise and worship. No, no, no. 
friends, I'm Addie Lopes, and I am the Preschool and Student Ministries Coordinator here at Jerome Church. This month, our whole church is learning together about the upside down and opposite teachings of Jesus found in the Gospel of Luke. As we have matched up our worship with what our kids are learning for our ops, Opposite Day series, each week, kids can join in learning that is designed just for them through our in-person programming and kids on demand videos. Every Sunday, we gather for in-person kids programming in Jerome Church Building at 9 and 10.30 a.m. where our kids and leaders play games, sing songs, make crafts, and meet new friends as we learn more about the Bible together. Kids and families can also tune in to a new weekly on-demand kids video every Sunday to hear the Bible story and learn more about the big idea. A new video is available every Sunday to watch on demand on the church YouTube channel, in the Jerome Kids Face Group group, and in the Church Center app. Now, let's hear more about Jesus' teaching as we continue our Opposite Day series with a message from Pastor Bruce. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Our first scripture lesson today can be found in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up into a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy. When they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. From the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring my charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever heard the term oxymoron? It's a, uh, a figure of speech in which apparently contradictory words or terms appear in conjunction with each other. I wrote sound, down some examples. In literature from Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare said, Parting is such sweet sorrow. Lots of other examples. I was surprised how many we used. Uh, just in general language, uh, have you ever been a part of a small crowd? Have you ever heard old news, deafening silence, 
called something awfully good. You know, that's the way I want it almost exactly. You know, it's the same difference. Have you only had an opportunity, if you only had one choice, it becomes the only choice? When we tell someone to act naturally, maybe something is bittersweet. One of my favorite is the term jumbo shrimp. Contradictory, but they're together. Cruel kindness. Have you ever been told or said something is pretty ugly? And what about one of my favorite old horror movie scripts used to talk about the silent scream? These are sometimes funny terms that just are put together, but they're contradictory. They're opposites. Now, today's opposite day statement is a bit of an oxymoron itself. The statement we're looking at today is Jesus is with us even though we can't see him. Jesus is with us even though we can't see him. Now, today in the church, we celebrate Transfiguration Sunday, where we hear again the story of Christ and three of his disciples, Peter, John, and James, going to the top of a mountain to pray, and suddenly Christ is transfigured. Uh, transfigure means to be transformed into something more beautiful or elevated. Uh, and to these disciples, what they saw, the shining on Christ's face and being almost a glow in white was more beautiful or elevated than they had ever seen. And then as they began to awaken and notice this transfiguration, suddenly they realized that Moses and Elijah were standing there and they were having a discussion with Jesus about the time to come, the uh, future of Jesus when he would give himself up for all of creation. And I can't imagine a more beautiful scene to these uh, practicing Jews, these, these ones who had heard about Elijah and Moses from their scriptures. And they must have been in such awe, especially Peter, because he stumbles on his words as Elijah and Moses are leaving and said, no, this is a good place. Let's stop and we'll build a shelter, one for each of you. Yet as these words crossed his lips, a cloud surrounded them and the mountain, much like uh, scenes they had heard from the law, as we refer to it, the Old Testament. They would have heard and been familiar with this idea of God coming down and surrounding the mountain or God appearing in a cloud before the people during the story of their exodus from Egypt. They would have been familiar with this, and so they were frightened. And then even more, they heard a voice. The voice of God spoke and says, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. Yet just as quickly as everything had taken place, it was gone. And there stood Jesus alone, telling them to say nothing. They did not speak of the words or the experiences that they had. They kept it to themselves. On a day like this, on Transfiguration Sunday, uh, in this scripture, our focus should be on Jesus, on his glory, on his mercy, on his wisdom, and most importantly, on his presence. Even in our second reading from Romans, Paul expounds his belief that even though we face death all day long, we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What he's saying that in our high times and in our lows, in our brokenness, 
and our wholeness, in our wealth, or in our poverty, in our sickness and health, and our joys, and even our devastating loss and sadness, regardless of our situation or that which is out of our control, nothing, let me say that again, nothing can separate us from the love of God. The love of God and our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And it is in that statement that the crux, uh, the, that the paradox, the oxymoron, if you will, lies that Jesus is with us even though we can't see him. Our first reaction is, well, how, how is that possible that Jesus is with us? And let me just say right now that how this works is a mystery. So, if you like knowing the answer to everything, if you like the answers to all of life's questions, and is, it's absolutely necessary to you, then forget about this journey. You will never make it, for this journey is a journey of unknowables, of questions, of enigmas, of paradoxes, of things both fair and many times unfair. To put it shortly, our life journey as Christians is a journey of faith. Hear that word again. Our journey, our life journey as Christians is a journey of faith. Faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Let me say that again. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. We must begin as Christians to have faith in the mysteries of our religion, of our faith, of our Christianity, and stop feeling fear about those things we cannot explain to others except through our shared experiences or our lives and the saints that have preceded us in the scriptures and in story. I believe that Jesus is present in the wholeness and especially the brokenness of my life, even though I cannot see Jesus. He's present in the good and the bad. My wholeness and my brokenness. Not only do I believe that Jesus was and is and will be present, this also means I believe what he says and what he taught. The fact that Jesus is Lord of my life and that his presence is there means that his teachings and his commands have weight in my decisions and directions, the way I treat my family, the way I treat my friends, the way I treat my enemies, and the way I treat strangers is all because of the presence of Jesus in my life. Many times we say things like, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. It's one thing to believe in them. It's another thing to believe in their presence and what they say. Do we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? Do we believe what Jesus said, that we need to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Do we believe that we're supposed to love our neighbor? Do we believe that we're supposed to love our enemy? Do we believe that blessed are the poor? Do we believe these statements that we've talked about, these things that Jesus has said? Because it's more to than just to believe that Jesus was uh, the Son of God who lived in the past. It's another to believe that he is present with us, his love, 
God's love is present through Christ to us right now, that Christ Jesus has lordship over our lives right now. Do we believe the words and are we willing to follow them? Do you believe that Christ is present even though we cannot see him? As I admit it, if you need an absolute answer, if you need proof, all I have are the words of the scriptures, my own personal experience, and the stories and personal experiences of the saints that have gone before me. But for me, that's enough. Friends, we've been on this journey and will continue upon this journey. And yes, these lessons have been childlike in the sense that we took them directly from our curriculum that we teach our children. But it's not a lesson that stops in childhood. It's a dedication that we must make every day of our lives. Not only to believe that Christ is present in our lives, even though we can't see him, but bearing the weight, the awe, the majesty, the focus of what Transfiguration Sunday means, and believe not only in the person, but believe what the person said and have weight on your life as he is our Lord and Savior. It's a life journey that is like no others. I invite you to continue the journey with me now and in the days and weeks and months to come. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen.
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. It's good to be with you in worship today. My name is Sarah Merriweather and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome Church. Today we're wrapping up our series called Opposite Day as we've been looking at the counter-cultural teachings of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. As we continue in worship together today, I want to invite you to open up your Church Center app so that you can connect to the tools for ministry and missions at Jerome Church available to you online. If you don't have the app yet, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen and follow the instructions below to connect with us. While you're in the app, please be sure to check in to worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore all of the opportunities in the app as you find your ways to worship, serve inside and outside of the church building, and grow spiritually through small groups and studies. Over these next few weeks, there are opportunities for students and adults to take their next steps in faith and commitment here at Jerome Church. Beginning today, Sunday, February 27th, a confirmation class will begin for our students in grades 7 through 12 as they learn more about the church and their faith and confirm the promises made for them at their baptism. Then on March 6th, we will hold a Discover Jerome class for anyone that would like to learn more about the ministries and missions of Jerome Church and connect to our pastor and staff. Following Discover Jerome, we will begin a new member class on Sunday, March 13th for those interested in becoming members of this church. Then beginning next Sunday, March 6th, we will start a new all-church study for the Lenten season called Savior as we explore and gain a deeper understanding of the cross and Jesus' life, death, and resurrection through this worship and small group study series. Our hope is that everyone who calls Jerome Church their church home will participate in this study and worship series. There are opportunities to participate in the pastor's study on Wednesday evenings, in our daytime study that I'll be leading on Tuesday mornings or join the study with your existing or new small group. If you're interested in participating in any of these upcoming classes and groups, you can find more information in the Church Center app, in today's video description, and on the Jerome Church website. This is also the last week to support the Diaper Angels through our February Diaper Drive. You can help Kayla and Jacob reach their goal of collecting 30,000 diapers this month. Diapers can be dropped off to Jerome Church all month long, or you can scan the QR code that's on the screen to shop the Amazon wish list and have diapers shipped directly to Jerome Church. All sizes are welcome, but sizes 5 and 6 are most needed, but the least donated. Thank you for your support, as together we are changing the world one diaper at a time. Together, the people of Jerome Church are living the mission of loving God and loving people through the life-changing missions and ministries of this church, like our groups and the Diaper Angels, fueled by your regular and generous giving. 
You can give your offering today electronically through the Give tab in the Church Center app, or if you're giving for the first time, you can text the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. Giving is also available through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office, or you can mail a check to Jerome Church at the address below. Now, as we close out our time of worship together, our choir is going to lead us in our closing song of worship. been a wonderful time of worship together and I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching worship later on demand we look forward to connecting with you online this week and invite you back next week as we begin our new Lenten worship and study series called Savior have a blessed week friends <music>